I've had some people ask me what hardware and software I use to write my music. Well, this changes constantly because every film project I find something new that speeds up my workflow. It could be a Cubase shortcut or a, a new piece of gear or a sample library. So I'll share what I'm using today, but just know that in a few months it may be different. Now I don't have any sponsors, so this is all just stuff that I bought myself. I'd say it's a pretty practical setup, so that means you won't find any fancy hardware synthesizers or modular gear or any of that stuff. I mean that stuff is cool, but currently I'm all in the box. Now currently my computer is an iMac Pro and I use that to run Cubase. In another room, I have a trash can Mac Pro with 128 gigabytes of RAM and on that I run VE Pro for my strings, brass, and woodwinds. The reason why I keep the Mac Pro in another room is because it puts out a lot of heat once VE Pro gets running. And in the summertime, that can get really hot. Now the iMac Pro here also has 128 gigabytes of RAM and that also runs VE Pro locally and that plays my percussion, keys, tune percussion, and ensemble patches. Remember how I said my setup is always changing? Well, my computer setup is next on my list to upgrade, hopefully. The iMac Pro here is six years old and my trash can is nine years old, so I'd love to simplify my setup and run everything on just one computer. Anyway, to hold my samples, I have an eight terabyte Glyph Atom Pro drive. Yep, that's it taped to the back of the iMac because the last thing I want is for that cable to come loose. I also have a 4 terabyte SATA SSD. I back all those up to a pair of 16 terabyte spinning hard drives, and one of those I keep offsite. If any one of my sample library drives go down, the last thing I want is to have to download all those again, so backups are important. I also have a couple of these Glyph Atom SSDs for system backups using Carbon Copy Cloner, and I also use Backblaze for cloud backups. So for computer monitors, in addition to the iMac screen, I have a 27-inch uh, NEC here that I use for browsing sample libraries and looking at my VE Pro server and browsing for files in the Finder. And then I have a 40-inch Dell on the left that I use for the piano roll and the Cubase mixer. I, I love the size of the thing, but it's, it's 5K display, so everything is super tiny, and I actually had to get reading glasses just so I can see the dang thing. My desk is this big office type desk that I got from Ikea that I've, I've had forever and it works as well as anything else I've seen. I think one of the hardest things for a composing desk is getting the ergonomics right so especially the the computer keyboard is always difficult to to avoid having to you know lean over over your MIDI keyboard and now your shoulders are all you know your back is bending and stuff so I've got this, fill, uh, it's called a Fellows Tilt and Slide Pro, and this thing is great because it kind of solves the problem. You can, you can have it back when you're playing your keyboard, and when you need to type, you just move it right here, and now my back is kind of where it should be. Underneath the monitors, I have an iPad running Metagrid Pro, and this gives me even more shortcuts. I won't get too in-depth in this video on Metagrid because that's way too involved, but one of my favorite things is I can just show certain types of tracks. So just LA Modern Percussion, for example. This saves time scrolling to find what I need. It took quite a bit of time to set this all up, but I couldn't have done it without Jason Graves and his videos, so I recommend checking those out. So the MIDI keyboard I'm using is called a Roland FP4F. It's actually kind of a digital piano, not really a MIDI controller. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it if you're going to buy something new. This is just what I had. Uh, it's kind of slow and heavy to, to push the keys, but it works well enough, uh, especially because I also have a 61 key complete control, and that has synth action keys, so it's great for stuff like synths and percussion and string spiccatos. So for my MIDI CC controller, I have this uh, Fader Master Pro, and you can kind of see how I have the, the CCs mapped with the labels here. 
Uh, CC2 and 3 I use for things like vibrato or assignable parameters like filter cutoff. I also have the click volume on a fader, which was a total game changer. There's nothing worse than working on a quiet part of the music and having the super loud metronome going and having to go into menu and adjust it. So with this fader, I can just bring it down and uh, it's just so much better. I also like how this shows the CC value. That's kind of useful to have as well. Uh, next to the Fader Master is the Stream Deck, which I have a bunch of Cubase shortcuts on. Uh, sometimes there's just too many keyboard shortcuts to remember, so this is nice because the button just does what it says it does. And you can string together several commands with one button. If you notice here, I have a special button that says Be Nice. If I'm ever tempted to respond to a mean comment on a YouTube video, for example, I just push this button instead, and it just makes me much nicer. I don't really understand the technology involved. I assume it sends some sort of electric shock to the person who posted the mean comment. So the audio interface I'm using is an RME. It's called the Fireface UCX2. I really love this thing. I just recently got it. And uh, I was previously using an Apogee Duet 2. And then they did a driver update and it just kept crashing my system. So I said enough with that. I did some research on which interface had the best drivers and RME is kind of known for their driver stability and the low latency. Um, they're actually one of the few companies that write their own drivers. I also love that this has a loopback feature so it allows me to do uh, screen captures of my DAW window and I can monitor the audio in real time and there's no latency. And then I also have this uh, RME controller called the ARC USB. And this just allows me to adjust the volume going to my speakers. There's no audio actually passing through this. It's just a control for the interface itself. It also has a handy like mono button, so I can turn that on, which can be useful for mixing. And then my speakers are connected digitally using an AES cable. So there's no extra analog conversions going on. This is the cleanest signal path that I can get. The speakers I'm using are by Genelec. They're called the Ones. And these are model 8341. And I also have a Genelec 7360 subwoofer. Uh, these have this unique design where all the sound is coming at you from one point. So the sweet spot is really big compared to other speakers where if you move your head too much in any direction, it can change the sound. Um, the other reason why I got these is that they have a room correction feature called GLM. And it comes with a microphone and it just measures your whole room and it kind of configures the subwoofer levels, the crossover point, the speaker delay, the phase correction, and it just tunes it all up for you. You don't have to be an engineer, it just makes it easy. And if you take a look at the measurement that it took of my room, you'll see it's anything but flat. It's got spikes and dips, especially in the bass area. Once I turn on the correction, it just sounds so much better and it's also you know, a lot flatter so I can make educated mixing decisions based on what I'm actually hearing. So all the correction is happening inside the speaker hardware itself. There's no special drivers to install or it doesn't have to take over your audio interface or anything like that. It does have its own software that I can use to control the speakers, change the volume and take the measurements. All those measurements are then uploaded into the speaker. And so there's no latency or lag. All the processing happens in the speaker. So uh, it saves your computer from, you know, having to do all that calculation. I also have these sound panels that my wife actually built for me. Uh, between the two of us, she's definitely the carpenter. So we picked up some rock wool insulation from the Lowe's and built these ourselves and uh, they work great. Uh, for headphones, I use the Sennheiser HD 650s. Uh, they, actually, these are the, the drop version of these, the HD 6XX but there's essentially the same thing. I believe they're one of the more neutral sounding headphones, so the mixes generally translate pretty well. Well, I guess that about does it for the hardware that I use. In the next video, I'll talk about the software, the sample libraries, my Cubase template, and BE Pro, and all that good stuff. I'd love to hear about what kind of hardware that you're using in your setup. And if you have any questions, about my setup, feel free to put them in the comments. Just don't make me use the Be Nice button. We'll see you next time. Bye.